Hey, thanks for joining us here at the LifePoint Church YouTube page. Really quick, before the message, three things that you can do. Number one, subscribe. We want you to be the first to know when we're dropping new messages. Number two, interact. Hop in the comments and chat with us. We want to do this thing with you. And number three, share this message with someone you care about. And never forget, God loves you and he has a plan for you. Now enjoy the message. Well, good morning. Good morning. Man, it is so good to see everyone else that also couldn't afford to get out of town for the weekend. It's great to have you. Thanks for coming today. There was literally like 10 people at last service. It was fantastic, but I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to all of you watching online as well. I don't know about you, but my, like my Instagram feed is filled with people who are hanging out at Chelan. Anybody else? Like you just feel, listen, we can pray for them that they get a sunburn. That's what my prayer is for them today. But I'm glad to see all of you here today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Rusty and I get to be one of the pastors around here, but I'm excited. We're in week three, a series we started called Jesus Ways. Here's what it's all about. It's all about trying to figure out and navigate kind of the paths that God would have for us. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I started this whole series off with talking about self-control. Maybe you remember, and, and kind of just that whole thought process of, of really, it's, it's about what God does in us, that, that we, you know, we can try, uh, but it's really God who is really a great integral part in all of that. But, but in that too, uh, maybe you guys are like me, but, but there are just times where there's, there's, I mean, I just might fly off the handle. I might just say some, something to someone or something or whatever. And I just sit there and I wonder, where in the world did that just come from? Like anybody else with me on that? Like it just happens all the time. I wish it didn't. I wish it, I really do, but, but it just does, right? And so this morning, here, here's the deal. Here's what Jesus actually says, because, because a lot of those things that, that just kind of fly out, it's because we have suppressed issues deep down inside. And that's not just a psychology thing, that's actually a Jesus thing as well. Jesus says what's in your heart will eventually come out. Like it's eventually going to come out and people are going to see it. And so this morning, I wanted to kind of talk about like the sister thing, you know, in relation to self-control. And that's really something we all kind of struggle with, get super practical today. And it's this whole idea of anger. Anger. I mean, anybody in here willing to admit the person sitting next to you deals with anger from time to time? Anybody in here at all? Yeah, right? We all do, don't we? Like every single one of us do for sure. And if you think that you don't, next week I'm going to talk about self-delusion. I'm just letting you know, okay? Because we all do. Like there's just things that we fly off the hand. And I don't know what triggers you. Maybe it's, maybe it's the person that won't shut up during a movie and they just keep on talking. Maybe it's the person who has no idea how to deal with a roundabout, anybody in here at all, where you're just like, dude, look left. Like, what's, the, what's so hard about this, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's the, the neighbor that just lets their dog defecate on your yard and never picks it up. I don't know. Maybe you live in a cul-de-sac. That's the thing. Maybe it's someone who cuts you off in traffic and then goes ahead and just tells you how much you're like, you're number one in their life, right? Anybody had that happen to you before? Like, it's your fault at all. And then you just feel this total desire to just chase them down with your car and go full Carrie Underwood on them. Maybe it's just a pastor. I don't know. But maybe that's part of what your issues are too. And see, again, we all have these things that kind of set us off. And, and I don't know exactly what yours might be, but I do know this, that if we don't deal with them, it can really, really hurt us. The Apostle Paul, he said this in Romans chapter 12. Here's what he said. He said, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what he's saying is this really matters. And so this morning, we're going to kind of get into it. And, 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 and so here's what, here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to think about the person that you are angriest with right now. Think, think about that person right now. Don't look at them. Don't nudge them. Just think about them right now, okay? Here's where this gets really, really real for me, all right? I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Oftentimes, it gets really real when I think about this, when I'm dealing with, with my kids. Any other parents out there? Because here's the thing with my kids, like I know I can go from zero to 60 just like that. They drive me nuts. I have five of them. They're amazing. I love them with everything I got, but I can also just go just like that. Here's what I also know, that parents that don't get this under control, you know what we do? We wound our kids. We wound our children. And what they do is they end up growing up and repeating the same, the same patterns. In fact, I don't know if you recall, but a few months ago, I actually spoke on, on worry. And if you don't remember that, it's fine. Trust me, I don't remember half of what I say up here anyway. But, but here's the deal. Like, that's why it gets me in trouble all the time, okay? <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, worry is one of those things that, that it's like a destruction that we bring upon ourselves. Folks, anger is that destruction that we actually bring upon, upon others. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus talks about the Ten Commandments. He starts talking about murder, right? And he kind of 
correlates it to anger. And, and here's what he says. He says, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will also be subject to judgment. And see, what Jesus is saying in that, he's saying, hey, I, I want you to look inside. I want you to take responsibility for your anger. Because if you don't, here's what's going to happen. You become a slave to it. He's saying you will become a slave to it. And so part of us being able to do this, right, part of us being able to take control of these things and, and really owning all of that is, is I, I just want to start out just by making sure that we're all on the same page and make sure we all understand where it kind of comes from, okay? I, I know we all do this in our life and, and all that, but, but really honing on where does this stuff really, really come from. So if you want to take notes and follow along, pull that outline out of your program. If you're online, just press the button. But here's, here's the first thing I want you to write down. Here's the first reason. Number one is I'm hurt. And I think every single one of us in here knows that hurt and pain typically drive the anger in our lives. This last week, I got an email from a person that, that was really just hauling off and they're lashing out. And, and in that moment, like my walls started going, I'm reading it and my walls started, I'm like, whoosh. And, I, and, and eventually I just like, whatever, psh, whatever. You know, I don't care what they said. And like for the next four days straight, I was having a conversation in my head with that person, but they weren't there. So I was winning every single time. Anybody else there with me on that? Like I was Floyd Mayweather status because I was 50 and 0. I was killing it. It was great. Here's what I started understanding though. As I started to kind of step back and, and think about it, I really started to understand that there was, there was pain and there was, there was difficulty that was going on. There was, there was isolation and they were lashing out. The challenge, and we all know this to be true in our own lives, we've experienced it. The challenge with lashing out is that it can actually cause even more, more issues. And see, sometimes our anger is righteous and sometimes it's justified, but it can still have a corrosive effect on our lives and our relationships if we're not, if we're not careful. Number one is I'm hurt. Here's the second one. Number two is I feel guilty. And guilt is, guilt is kind of a strange one because this is something I've become more and more convinced the longer, the longer that I've been pastoring, Okay where I found that, that people who are, who are really mad, literally, people who are really mad are sometimes involved in really serious sin. And, and I found that to be true, uh, especially with people who are judgmental, right? That when they're judgmental, they, they, they're, a lot of times they're in radical disobedience to God or they're doing something very wrong or hurtful in their own life. I, I may have told you before, but I can remember there was a gal who was, who was really, really mad. And, and, and she just started hauling, just like two weeks ago when I, when I was talking about self-control, there was a point in that message that I said, hey, you know what? Sometimes we can give ourselves a haul pass to so just go ahead and haul off, right? Because, or maybe we feel like we deserve to be able to do X, Y, Z. Well, this particular gal heard that a long, long time ago uh, and she got really, really angry with me. Here is why though. Eventually we found out that she got really, really angry because she was doing that exact thing and she was really self-medicating with illegal drugs. And so she was like, man, but, but that's actually what she was doing. In one of my former churches, I also had a guy, he would harp on me all the time. Russ, we need to talk about discipleship. Russ, we need to hone in on discipleship. Discipleship, discipleship, discipleship. The whole time, right? Come to find out uh, what he was doing was he was actually spiritually manipulating women to, in the church so that they would sleep with them. That's what he was doing. And see, and see here's the thing. Now, if, if anyone just gets mad at me, I just assume that they're in deep sexual sin or on drugs. One of the two. Here's why this happens. Here's why this happens. Because I can create, if I can create a scenario where you deserve to be punished and I deserve to be able to break the rules, then not only is my sin justified, but I have a right to be mad at you for the reason that I'm sinning and it's crazy. That's what happens. Here's the third one, write this down. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. And see, sometimes we, we can start thinking, you know, hey, hey, this life hasn't worked out the way that I've wanted to. Anybody ever thought that before? Or hey, this marriage hasn't worked out the way that I really wanted to. Or this job hasn't worked out the way that I really wanted to. Or that vacuum that I bought for my wife last Valentine's Day really didn't work out the way that I wanted to. All the newlyweds in the house, don't do that, okay? I did one time. Bought a Dyson. Thought I was good because it was a Dyson. No, I wasn't. <laughs> didn't work, right? And we can get disappointed. In the Bible, there's a story about a guy named Job. And many of you may have heard of Job. If you're online, maybe you've heard of Job. But Job was a righteous man and, and, and he loved God and all that. But in the story, if you've never heard of it, uh, the devil goes to God and he says, hey, you know what? People only serve you. Job only serves you because of the good things that you give him. Because you always treat him so well and you give him all these blessings. And so God said, fine, go ahead. Strike my servant, servant Job. 
And what happened, if you know the story, what happened was that Job loses his health, he loses his wealth, right? He, he, he loses his kids, his dog, his pickup truck. It's like the first very country song, you know, the first ever country song on there. But then he plays it back where he gets it all back. He does, he does get it all back. But sometimes, again, we can get angry because we feel disappointed. Because maybe we had an expectation that wasn't met. Side note about expectations, though. Here's a side note. Sometimes our expectations are not met because why? Because we didn't clearly communicate beforehand. And I know that's hard to admit sometimes because I know I did. I swear I told them, except I'm not really sure I always do it. I always do it well. And then here's the last one. Number four is I feel helpless. I feel helpless. Maybe some of you have gone through this before. Men in the house. Have, has your wife ever like jumped out of bed and said, hey, did you hear that? Anybody in here? Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. Happens in my house about once a month. Literally happens all the time. And, and my wife, she's just jumping. Hey, did you hear that? And here's the thing. Like I'm half asleep and I just know that she probably fell asleep watching some Netflix documentary about, about some serial killer. And she's like, no, can you go out there and check? I think Jeffrey Dahmer's out there. Go check, you know? <laughs> Listen, here's the deal. All right. I'm chivalrous, like I'll open doors and I'll do all that kind of thing. But, but listen, you know what I'm not? Intimidating. I'm really not. Especially when I'm in my BVDs in a plunger in the middle of the night. I'm, I'm, you know, it's just, I'm not intimidating, right? But here's what I also know. I've done a ton of weddings. Hey, how many married people in here? Any married people? Let me see. Yeah, come on. In, please tell me if this is true. In your vows, men, did you ever have a vow that said, I will check all the time? Anybody have that in their vow? No. I've done hundreds of weddings. I did one yesterday. It was not in the vow at all. I will check it's not in the vow. Here's the thing. Women, they, my wife has an expectation, and in that scenario, I feel helpless. Right? I feel like, well, what am I supposed to do, right? And in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking, hey, my dog probably just stepped on the remote watching Animal Planet right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what happened for real. But I, I feel helpless in the situation, and here's what happens. She's mad, I'm mad, anger ensues. And see, again, sometimes we can get angry because we feel helpless. And see, if you've ever experienced this, let, let, let me just say this. If you've experienced any of these, if you want to lower the tension level in your life, then we need to learn, listen, to extend grace to those who may have heard of us, hurt us. The Bible makes it clear. Our thoughts lead our actions, which guide our feelings. Here's why. Because right feelings follow right actions. Well, Russ, I just can't get a hold of my emotions. Yes, you can. You do it all the time. I'll give you a hypothetical situation. Married people in the room, you ever had a, had a discussion with your spouse? An intense fellowship of the Lord? Like, you know, whatever. And you're, you're, having, you're having an argument. Words are being thrown out there, right? Maybe other things are being thrown across the room as projectiles. I hope not. Don't do that. But maybe it is happening right now, right? And then the phone rings and you're like, oh, I got to take this. And so you just answer it. Hello, Brittany's phone. Yeah, praise the Lord. You ever do that? We do it a lot. And here's what we're doing. Again, we're giving ourselves permission to explode. We can, we, can, we can curtail it, but we're actually giving ourselves permission not to. Look what it says in Proverbs 16. Here's what it says. Patience is better than strength. Controlling your temper is better than capturing a city. And since we know where it kind of stems from, we're kind of all on the same page. Okay, this is where it kind of stems And there's more, but, but this is where it stems from. Then how do we handle it? How do we handle our anger in the way Jesus would want us to? And these are things that I'm learning uh, that, that, that are very, very challenging to master. Here's the first one, number one, you know, that we need to deal with our anger quickly. We need to deal with our anger quickly. Look at what it says in Ephesians chapter four. It says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. In other words, what you're angry about yesterday don't let it carry over to today. Or what you're angry about today, don't let it carry over until tomorrow. And the reason, obviously, is because it's not healthy for you. It's not, it's not good for you or for those around you. And see, if you're, if you're married, right? If you're married, you've probably heard the statement, don't go to bed angry. Anybody heard that? Yes, of course, right? Which is why some couples, they stay up till one, two, three o'clock in the morning trying to deal with all the, by the way, they have a name for those couples. You know what that is? Newlyweds. That's what that is, okay? <laughs> Seriously, because my wife, listen, we've been married 20 years. Here's what she's saying. Honey, it's nine o'clock. You got about 30 minutes to say I'm sorry because I'm going to bed. That's literally what my wife will say to me. The heart of what's being taught here in this verse is this though, is that we need to deal with our anger as soon as possible. 
that we need to make sure that we don't allow the sun to set on one season of life and let it carry over to the next season of life. Why? Because how we exit one season, how many of you know, how we exit one season is how we enter the other one. It's just a reality. It's a truth of scripture. And I've seen this happen quite a bit where people will carry their anger from childhood into adolescence or into their marriage or into their job or career or, or whatever. And what happens is this, is that we continue to bump into situation after situation that upsets us, that really upsets us. And we are confident with everything we've got that it's their fault, that we blame them, it's what they said, it's what they did, all of that. And yet we don't realize that at the root of all of it is that we're struggling with something that happened to us years and years ago that we never resolved. And see, here's the thing. If you're sitting here or maybe you're online or whatever, you're like, yeah, this is great, Rusty, whatever, whatever, right? Here's the, I, I, that's great, you know, that's okay. But can I tell you this, that just because you're not necessarily motivated to get rid of the anger in your life, I can bet, however, that the people in your life are definitely eager for you to do so. They're, they're looking forward to the day that it's no longer around. And I know that this can be hard to hear. These are things that we all struggle with. That's why I got real quiet in here. But we need to deal with our anger quickly. Here's the second one. Number two is be proactive in your approach. Folks, I say that because we cannot wait until we explode to deal with our anger. I'll give you just a, another little truth of life. Every single one of us, listen, we are either stewers or spewers. Do you guys know which one you are? Like either you hold it in and hold it in and hold it in or you just explode every single time. We're either stewers or we are spewers. Here's the thing. Stewers, I mean spewers, listen, you got to control the tongue. Okay, God says there's wisdom and all. You got to get that under control. Stewers, however, sometimes we can think that, hey, I'm the better person. I'm being the bigger person in this, right? We can, that's what we can think. Except here's the reality. Stewers will always spew at some point. At some point, it will happen, that you will spew. Make no mistake about it. It's inevitable. Except when it does, it will be much more devastating and there will be a lot bigger wake because we've been holding in so, so much. I see it happen in relationships all the time. Proverbs chapter 4, 23 says this, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. If you get nothing else out of this message, here's what I'm gonna ask you, this question. How are you proactively guarding your heart? How are you proactively dealing with the anger that we all have, this emotion that we all have? I, it's a question I want you to ask throughout the week. How am I proactively doing what scripture says, above all else, guard my heart? And see, here's the thing. If we can't be honest with our answers, or maybe we're just sweeping it on the rug, can I tell you this, that I really don't hold out too much hope for you? And I don't say that to be mean, but it's a reality. That maybe for some of us, you know what that means? It means that we need to go get counseling. And I've told you for years that counseling is not bad, that it's actually a good thing. Listen, my wife and I have been to three marriage counselors and a Catholic priest. Sounds like the start of a bad joke, but it's real. <laughs> that we've gone over and over because we, we're trying to deal with these, with these issues. We're trying to thrive in our marriage. The question, the ultimate question is this, is are we gonna be willing to, to actually put in the hard work? Typically, I'll just say this, and, and maybe you'll find this to be true in, in your life as well. Typically, we're willing to do the hard work if we see something as an issue. If we actually see it as a problem, we're willing to do the hard work. A lot of times, however, when it comes to anger, this area, we don't always recognize it as a recurring issue. What well, we look at it and say, oh, that was just a one-off. Just something that happened. Maybe it's something that's happening more and more than, than maybe we, we really think. Proverbs chapter 16, verse two, here's what it says. People may think all their ways are pure, but motives are weighed by the Lord. And see, here's what I'd say. It, even, if, even if you might not have an ongoing anger issue, folks, it's always smart to take time to reflect on what the scriptures are saying. Here's the third one, number three, is that we need to approach it with humility. Humility. 140 times in scripture, it talks about pride and humility. I'll just summarize it for you. Humility is good, pride is bad. That's what it says in 140 different verses. And honestly, this describes a lot of relationships out there as well, where I've been guilty so many times, and maybe you have it too, where I've been guilty of playing relational chicken. Anybody else with me on that? Where I'm waiting for the other person to, to say something. I'm waiting for them to give in. I'm waiting for them to admit that they're wrong. And typically, it's the other people in our lives, like our kids or our family members, who are at risk because of that behavior. Ephesians chapter four, verse two, here's what it says. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. And so what does that look like? 
What does it tangibly, practically mean to, to be humble and gentle and bear with each other in love? Here's what I think it means. It's not in your notes. You can write it down if you want to. Own your own part. That we need to own our own part. And, and here's what I know. I know, guys, I know that it's 95% their problem. I get it. That it's all, the, but, but there's 5% that, like it's 95 of them, 5% of mine. Here's what we gotta do. We gotta add, we gotta admit and own and, and understand that it's our five and say, I'm sorry about my five. Now, when you're doing that, don't tell them the percentages. <laughs> but own your five. It's using words like I'm sorry or forgive me or, or man, I messed up. Here's what I did. Like own your five. Here's why we have to own our five. Here's why. Because owning our part actually blows out the log jam for the relationship to be able to keep on going. That it starts it all. That we start using words like forgive me and I was wrong and all that. Here, here's the truth. Can I, this ain't your know, You write it down as well if you want to. Humility is always better than regret. It's always better than regret. Ephesians chapter 4, 31 through 32. Here's what it says. Get rid of all bitterness. It says get rid of it. Rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And folks, I realize, trust me, I know that that is not simple. And sometimes, sometimes it's very, very, very complex. Sometimes, though, it's complex because here's why. Because we're looking for someone to blame. I'll give you an example. If every single one of us, and I know it's true for every single one of us, right? And every single one of us online. If every one of us went into the doctor and the doctor says, you have cancer, our number one concern would be this. How do I get rid of it? Is that not true? Like, how do I get rid of it? But when it comes to dealing with the things of the heart, folks, we spend a ton of time defending it. We say, how, how did this happen? Who, I, who do I have to blame for it? All that, instead of saying, I don't want to live with this another day that I want to carry this into another season. And the reason, you know why we do this though? Here's why we do this. is because we feel like if we don't, we're letting somebody off the hook. Is that not true? That if we don't do it, then we're actually just going to let them off the hook. And here's the thing. Whatever it is, is a debt. Like there's a debt that needs to be paid. Hey, you didn't make it right. Hey, you didn't show up to my graduation. Hey, you should have worked harder. Hey, you should have loved me more, whatever. The truth is it's not about payback and it's not about fair. It's about our marriage, our kids, and our families. And I get really hyped up about this stuff. I do because there's hundreds of people that walk into my office and they say, Russ, this whole thing is blowing up. And I don't want that for you. Like I want it to be different, but a lot of times it takes, okay, Lord, there's a humility that I have to have here and it's gonna be stinking hard to do. But that's what he's calling us to. That's the Jesus ways. That's, that's what he's calling us to. Where again, we can, we, can, we can blame and justify and all that, but all we're really doing is just killing the relationships in the process. I do believe, though, that there's also theological reasons why we should do this. That God actually sets it from the beginning of time. This is why it matters. By the way, I'll just give you another little tidbit theologically. There's a statement called Imago Dei, okay? It's a 50 cent word, theological word, whatever. It means the image of God. Here's what that really means. We were made in the image of God. That's what the Imago Dei means, okay? Okay. What, that, what he's saying in that is that God is relational. And he's saying that we are also relational. And when our relationships aren't right, then we are not operating the way that we are called and made to be. And so the first one, I want you to write this down. Why is grace better than anger? Here it is, because every person has great value. Every person has great value. The message that's communicated throughout Scripture is that human beings are, again, a reflection of the glory of God. We're made in his image. Now, yes, I am a very dull and poor reflection of his image. I get that. But we are still a reflection nonetheless. Genesis 9, 6, God made human beings in his own image. Where well, here's the creator, he's the giver of life. And as a result, every one of us as human beings has the glory of God stamped on us in some way. None of us are superior to the other. People in a chess club, not superior to athletes. People who work at Boeing, not superior to Microsoft people. People who are dog lovers, not superior to cat lovers. They're smarter, they're just not superior. <laughs> but see, we don't understand this. If, if we don't understand, we will always have a bend towards, towards anger. Here's why. Because, because we'll always see ourselves as superior to others and they get frustrated that they're not just like us. When that's our view, we get frustrated with others because they're not 
just like us or as good as us. Here's the second theological truth that, that a lot of us, here it is, because I've received God's grace. Folks, how many of you in this room would say you've received the grace of God? Come on, let me see the hands. Unmerited favor, blessing of God. It's amazing that we've seen and we've felt and we've, we've understood to, a, to a whatever degree we can God's grace. And see, the truth is Jesus didn't come to earth to get even. He came to love and forgive even those who had, who had given up on him. Where ultimately, if you've never heard this before, ultimately the cross is not about judgment, it's about grace. And see, in this, I've had people say, oh, Russ, you know, it's, here's the thing, man. I'm just not ready to forgive. And I'm just, I'm just not ready to, to give grace. And trust me, I get that. I understand. Because some of you make it really, really hard to do that. I'm just glad he didn't say it to me. Colossians 3.13, here's what he says. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Folks, I've said it many, many times. That sometimes we can think that Jesus came to make bad people good. No, he didn't. He came to bring dead people to life. Which means this, that God doesn't just want to deal with our propensity to, or our inclination to, to respond to evil with evil or anger to anger. But actually, it's more than that. That he wants to renovate every single thing in here. That he wants to take our heart and he wants to change it. That he would want us to love even those who hurt us. That's what he's trying to do. That's what he's calling us. And then here's the third thing. It's because anger robs my joy. But you can't have joy that God intends for your life if we're mad all the time. I've read this before, but I like it. It says this, a dog, a dog can whip a skunk in a fight any time, but sometimes it's just not worth it. Right? Now listen, I don't speak hillbilly, but it sounds right, okay? Just letting you know. The same is true when it comes to our anger. Folks, we can either give up our anger or we give up our joy. That's what scripture says. You give this up or you give up joy. Job, that guy that I talked about earlier. Job 11, 13 through 16, here's what it says. It says, put your heart right, reach out to God, face the world again, firm and courageous. Then all your troubles will fade from your memory like floods that are past and remembered no more. Folks, we're going to screw up in this area time after time after time. But it's the reason why the cross means so much. It's the reason why grace matters so much. But God's not just saying, I want to give you grace. God's saying, I want you to do the same thing for somebody else. Then I want you to break out the log jam. Then I want you to act in humility. Then I want you to be proactive in how you guard your heart. He's saying, that's the Jesus way. And that is what's ultimately going to give you what you want. Peace, joy, long-suffering. This week, how are we going to be proactive on guarding this? And again, I know that I know that I know that it's hard. I know there's real relationship issues in this room online. I know it. But how are we going to start doing what Jesus just told us to do. Father God, we are grateful for your word. We're grateful for your model. We're grateful for you. But my God and King, this is hard. Like these are emotions that you've given us, but Lord, we also need you to help us keep them in check. Not give over to our sinful nature. And so Father, help us. Help us to walk out this truth in your way with your help, Holy Spirit. Come into our life right now. Invade our hearts right now. We welcome you, please God, so that you can help us do this. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. <laughs>